Hi there and welcome to this tutorial for enhanced object tracking. What I want to show you is um, how you can use enhanced object tracking and uh, why you should or perhaps can use this. Um, let's have a look at this uh, setup that I created. Uh, I got two routers, router 1, router 2. There are two links in between them, uh, both fast ethernet. The 192.168.1 subnet on this link, the 2 subnet on the other link, um, and there's a loopback on router 2, which has this IP address. Okay. Now, if I want to be able to ping um, the 222 IP address from router 1, uh, I could create a static, which works perfectly fine, but um, Let's say uh, I create a static and I want to have a backup link. Okay, all good. I just create another static uh, for this link. Uh, I can change the administrative distance. Um, and in that case, when this link would fail, it would mean that the static route will be removed from the routing table. And the second static, which has a higher administrative distance, will be added to the routing table. But what would happen if this link, uh, the physical link is up, but for some reason it's not uh, working, then my static would be in the routing table, but um, I would have a problem, because uh, it's, it's not working. The physical interface is up, but something else is wrong, and we might have a problem. So what else can we do is use enhanced object tracking. Um, for example, I could start uh, an ICMP uh, echo and uh, I could ping this IP address on this link. So the 192.106.8.1.2 uh, IP address. And if this ICMP echo fails, then I will remove this static from the routing table and put in another static. So that's kind of a cool feature and I'll show you how to do this. Alright, first of all I need to set up some IP addresses. That's one router. Mm -hmm. Let's set up the loop back. And I should be able to ping the other side. That's the first link. It's working. And the second link is also working. Okay. Now let's have a look at router 1. Um, obviously I can't ping the loopback. Because I don't have a static or a routing protocol or anything. And we'll set up a static route using enhanced object tracking. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is set up a SLA monitor. And I'm using an ICMP echo. Um, and I want to ping this IP address, 1.2. And to show you, that's the IP address of router 2 on the first link. Ok, so I can specify source interface fast ethernet 00, so that's the first link. Ok, that looks good. Um, oh, my bad. I still need to 
specify a timeout 2000 milliseconds frequency in seconds now we need to start up my SLA monitor okay that's good and now we will configure the track command and I can use an uh, attract object number we just pick number one response time reporter number one so I'm tracking the SLA monitor okay looks good and now it's time to set up some statics So this is my first static route, but instead of hitting enter, I'm going to use the track command. So I'm telling it to track object number one. Okay, that's good. And I'm also adding a second static. And this second static is for the second link in case the first link is uh, failing. But I'm going to change the administrative distance. So I'm uh, by default a static route has an administrative distance of one. So for the second one we'll use uh, two. Okay. All good. Let's have a look at the routing table. It shows us uh, our static over here, 2222, uh, by using the first link. Let's see if it works. Works perfectly fine. Now let me shut down the first link. Now this is interesting. It says tracking state, 1 RTR1 state, it used to be up, but now it's down. And as you can see, the second static route has been entered into the routing table by going to this IP address. So, for this example, Let's say the first link, my, uh, my physical link, would be up. But in this case, if the ICMP echo would fail, then the static will be removed and the second static will be entered. And that might be useful. So, thank you for watching this tutorial.